the new New York State Global Exam format. Well, the new Global Exam is just around the corner. The first transition test will be held in June of 2018, and then each exam time after that. That would be August of 2018, January, June, and August of 2019, and January and June of 2020. In August of 2020, all districts will be taking the new exam whether they want to or not. The transition test will use the current format, but will only test material from 1750 and beyond. Instead of having 50 multiple choice questions, there are now only going to be 30. For information on the global transition test, please see the New York State's Frequently Asked Questions page for the Global Exam Memorandum of 2016. You can access it on Google and it's the first link. Our focus for the rest of this video will be on the new frameworks-based exam that all students will take as of August 2020. The format. As it's currently understood, the new exam will be made up of three sections. Part 1. The first part will replace the current 50 multiple choice questions. Instead, students will be faced with responding between 25 and 30 questions. Each of these questions will be multiple choice and be stimulus based. That means that each question will be attached to a map, a chart, a reading of up to 300 words, a quote, a photograph, or other primary or secondary source material. That said, one item might serve as the stimulus for multiple questions. An important skill on this portion of the test is that kids understand the concepts and relationships, such as cause and effect. Part 2. The second portion of the test will consist of two separate documents that have approximately nine short answer questions in total. The first document will be either historical or geographic in nature. It will be followed by two or three short answer questions that the kids need to respond to. The kids will then need to answer a few questions about a second related document. With this document, the kids, kids will be asked sourcing data and to check for bias, point of view, and or reliability. The final step of the second section of the exam will require kids to compare and contrast those two documents. Part 3. The final portion of the test is the section that we know least about at this point. This portion of the exam will be an essay on enduring issues in social studies. An enduring issue is defined as an issue that has affected people or has been affected by people and that has continued as a concern over time. For example, kids might be asked to discuss government, revolution, or discrimination in the essay. The essay will be based upon a series of five documents. The students need to reference at least three of those documents in their analysis of the issue. In addition, the students will be asked to make a claim that the issue is of importance by using the documents and how the issue has changed over time. Outside information will continue to be a requirement to score well on this portion. It's important to note that the exam is still in its developmental stages. The New York State Education Department will be posting updates and a video at the end of April or in May of 2017 to share more information. In addition, they will be posting an enduring issues list to provide a bit more specificity about what exactly these might be. So our question is, how do we prepare for this? Well, two ways. First, we have to make sure that our students are using the social studies practices. Those practices are identified on pages 2 and 3 in the 9 through 12 social studies frameworks. For your convenience, here they are. Gathering, interpreting, and using evidence. Chronological reasoning and causation. Comparison and contextualization. Geographic reasoning. Economics and economic systems. And civic participation. Another way we can be preparing our kids is to make sure that they have primary sources in front of them as often as possible to analyze. We also need to make sure that the kids not only know what the document is, but what led to that document and then what resulted from it. Again, going back to that cause and effect. And the last thing that we need to be working on is to make sure that the students determine when they have those documents, the author's purpose, the point of view, 
the bias, the intended audience, and the reliability of that document. Again, just for your reference, here's a timeline for the transition examination and the new frameworks based exam. As you'll see, the transition examination is going to first be offered in June of 2018, and every district in New York State will be responsible for administering the new framework exam in Global History and Geography 2 by August of 2020. Thank you.